India and Pakistan have hated each other for 70 years. Here's why. The British ran India for more than two centuries and it would be a bit of an understatement to say that Indians weren't happy about it. All the country's rage was directed at the British. To put a stop to that, India's colonizers had an idea. Divide and rule. What does that mean? Pit Muslims against Hindus, against Sikhs, against Christians. To put minorities in positions of power over majorities. The idea was, if they're fighting each other, they're not fighting us. Ingenious, right? This isn't to say that Indians didn't fight over religion before the British came. But it was the first time that this was a result of policy. Religion became more important than language and ethnicity and mistrust between religious communities became the norm. It trickled up to Indian politicians like the Muslim League's Muhammad Ali Jinnah who talked about having a separate Muslim state if the British were to ever leave. Then World War I began. The British promised to leave India if Indians fought for them. They fought, but independence didn't happen. Two decades later, it was World War II. Again, there was a promise of independence in return for troops. This time, leaders like Mahatma Gandhi and Jawaharlal Nehru, who would later be India's first Prime Minister, said no. Jinnah, the Muslim League leader, wanted British support for a new Muslim country, so he convinced Indian Muslims to fight. If you wondered what Indians were doing at Dunkirk, now you know. By the time World War II ended, it was clear that the British were going to leave. Many Muslims began to fear living under a Hindu majority in a democratic India. And many Hindus were angry that Muslims wanted to break up the country. This descended into brutal acts like killings, forced conversions, arson, abductions, rape and ethnic cleansing. It all came to a head in Kolkata in August 1946. 4,000 Hindus were killed in the Great Calcutta Killings. This scared the British, and they promised to leave India in 1948. But their exit from India was not going to be clean or peaceful. The religious divisions they had stoked had turned into an inferno. Jinnah seized this opportunity and demanded a separate Muslim state. Nehru, also scared by the violence, reluctantly agreed. Gandhi opposed it, but it was too late. Jinnah supporters were in no mood to debate. Thinking they'd fix things, the British announced they would leave in August 1947, a year earlier than planned. This is the man who was brought in to divide the Indian Empire. Cyril Ratcliffe, a British lawyer who had never been anywhere east of Paris. He was given one job draw borders that would break up India, taking into account religion and other things like railways and irrigation canals. Ratcliffe was given only 36 days to do the job. He finished three days ahead of schedule, but the lines that created West Pakistan, India and East Pakistan were kept a secret until after independence. Ratcliffe didn't quite finish his job though. He didn't draw a line for Kashmir. What could possibly go wrong, right? On August 14, Pakistan gained independence. India gained independence the next day. Partition had become a reality. If you think the story has a happy ending, you haven't been paying attention. Here's the catastrophe that Ratcliffe's lines created on the ground. Seven million people moved from India to Pakistan. Seven million more went from Pakistan to India. One million were killed in the process, murdered, starved, and poisoned. Mobs lynched trains full of men, women, and children, and families have been split apart to this day. The militaries of the two countries were practically useless while this was going on. Soldiers were busy figuring out their own lives. The dust from August 1947 has yet to settle. Since then, India and Pakistan have fought three wars over Kashmir and one over East Pakistan, which eventually became Bangladesh. Both countries still fight over disputed borders and water, and both are nuclear powers. 
Even cricket matches between them are politically charged. And over 70 years, the divide between people who look the same, speak the same, dress the same, eat the same food and make the same music has become even deeper.